The time has come, my favorite time of the year. We are in football season. And at 32 years of age, right now there's nothing that I'm more passionate about than football and my Dallas Cowboys. Um, It was a thrilling week one game. A lot of things bothered me um, that I didn't necessarily expect to see. I didn't expect to see the offense so sloppy. Uh, There was a lot of worries that I had because of the loss of DeMarco Murray. Um, I'm a big fan of DeMarco. Not anymore, of course, because he went to the Eagles, but just... I, I believed in him, and I believed in him more of just a as, as a running back and not necessarily because of the system and only because of our offensive line he's any good. That being said, um, you just never know what you have until he gets out on the field. And I wasn't a big fan of Joseph Randall. I've never been a big fan of Joseph Randall. I'm more on Team McFadden. Uh, yes, I know Darren McFadden is injury prone, and yes, I know he is older. But honestly, he's only 28 years old. And he's never really had an opportunity with a winning system. So I like what he brings to the team. I like his speed. I like his power. I like um, his vision. I mean, I think that he's the best running back we have on this team, to be honest with you. But we're for whatever reason, we want to roll with Randall. So um, that was a little bit nerve-wracking for me. Uh, I really hated how the ball security, Beasley fumbling, which has become more of an issue lately. Um, he fumbled last year as well, and um, that was a big big one, And especially since it's got taken down to a touchdown. You ever notice that our turnovers turn into touchdowns? Like It's more than anything, and it's always these weird, fluky plays where nobody's around for the tackle. And it, ugh. Anyways, it's frustrating. Um the Devin Street one should not be called an interception, in my opinion. That was a fumble. He caught that ball and got popped, and uh, he fumbled. And um, uh, what's the other one? The Witten one. The Witten one was a bad throw by Tony, and Witten tried to still make a play, bobbled it up in the air, which that was kind of on Witten, and that was an interception. So it's just really fluky place. I mean, what's crazy too is I think the first drive we had the ball for ten minutes. I mean, we completely dominated the Giants in all aspects of the game, but we gave them seventeen points, and uh, it it was such a weird game. And then the way it ended, you know, with Eli throwing the ball and people making fun of the the Giants' decision making and all that, and then Rashad Jennings saying he's not supposed to score, which I don't necessarily believe because that guy ran full force. To, to the end zone and just got stopped in my opinion um but whatever whatever makes them feel better uh, also the fact that jj wilcox laid the wood on odell beckham and took him out of the game i mean that guy went to the wrong sidelines when he got hit you could tell he was shook after that and i love that physicalness you know i feel like our defense has definitely improved um and it's just a mindset now. Like, we're just a more physical team. If you're going to go and run on us, if you're going to pass on us, you're going to get hurt. We are there to lay the wood. And not only that, we're there to strip the ball like that. That one uh, play by Anthony Hitchens on Rashad Jennings, I mean, that was awesome. And that's what I like to see, that, you know, everything is the ball. Ball, ball, ball. And that's what Rob Marinelli preaches. So, um, you know, I did see some good things. Great to have Sean Lee back, the general. Um, unfortunately we lost Randy Gregory for a good four to six weeks. I mean, that guy's the best pass rusher on this team. Uh, when we were in the draft and, uh, you know, we, we, we drafted him. I mean, I, I, I love the draft and I do a ton of research on the draft and I looked into him and I mean, the biggest thing was, is, you know, could he keep on size and, you know, could he pass a drug test? But for the most part, he was a dynamic pass rusher that everybody believed in, um, they were just like off the field issues with him. And I thought he was just like tall, but going to be kind of raw and not really like be there till the next couple of years, like a good developmental player. Forget that. That kid is a beast and he is an instant impact player. So I can't wait to get him back. Um, and then with Des Bryant going down, Oh God. Okay. So he's out. Four to six weeks. I think the mainstream media wants to blow it up and make it eight to 12 weeks. I don't really believe that. I feel like if it was going to be an eight to 12 week injury, they'd have put him on short term IR. Uh, so obviously they believe he'll be back sooner than that. Um, so, you know, you just got to hope for the best with Des. Which brings me to my point is as long as we got Romo, we're going to be okay. 
Tony Romo right now is one of the top NFL quarterbacks in the National Football League. I mean, that guy is so clutch. Like, it's ridiculous. And people will want to... I think one thing that, that the narrative of Tony Romo is is that in mainstream games, a lot of times he'll play bad, like on a Sunday night football game or whatever the case may be, and people will only view it as that. And there are so many times, though, where Romo has bailed us out. And what gets on my nerves is people will be like, well, you're just a Cowboys fan, so that's why you defend Romo. Look, if I thought Tony Romo sucked, if I thought Tony Romo was the reason why we lose games, I want him off this team. I would be calling for his head. But I know the it's the exact opposite. The only reason we're in these games is because Tony Romo. Tony Romo, and what people don't understand about Tony Romo is he's such a student of the game. He can read defenses. He he can line up receivers and tell them where they need to go. Like he'll audible out of plays and make better decisions. Like the guy is unreal when it comes to just knowing what to do and in every situation he's comfortable you know it's like it's like Romo said when that they they didn't rule uh the des catch a catch which it was a catch and everybody knows it was a catch um he he just immediately thought okay the defense gets me the ball back and then I might have three plays left and if I'm going to go through those three plays this is probably the three plays that I'll run if I'm at this minute mark then I'll run these plays if I'm at this minute mark I'll run these plays like he constantly is thinking about what he's going to do and uh no matter what situation he's got a game plan for it and we're very well prepared in situations because we're very well coached um but for what Tony Romo did that night, I mean, I'm a huge fan and I'm always a believer, but man, that still that guy still like surprises me and that guy still impresses me like to just drive it down the field the way he did and like no hesitation, no worry on his face, just boom 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 touchdown, see you later Giants are going home. Like unbelievable. Uh so in saying that, those two drives where we scored touchdowns we didn't have Des Bryant, and we were still pretty effective. And so, without Des Bryant, I feel like okay, like like Lance Dunbar, for example, we didn't use him. Why? Because we had Demarco Murray. Now that we don't have Demarco Murray, we use Lance Dunbar, and as you can see, he was effective. And so, without Des Bryant, now, in my opinion, Gavin Escobar, it's your turn. You know, he's a second round pick. Um, he's not the best tight end as it comes to a physical blocking tight end, but as a wide receiver, he's a beast. He's very hard matchup. He's like six, seven, and he's got great hands and almost whatever he catches usually turns into a touchdown. So I think we should use him a lot more. <clears throat> you know, I think we'll definitely run more, um, more screens, things like that. Use Dunbar more. So, I don't think it's all doom and gloom in Dallas. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, and that's the thing too is all these eight and eight seasons where Romo's been accused of. Well, he went eight and eight. He went, eight. dude. I can't tell you how bad those defenses were. I mean, it literally got to the point where we didn't even need to put out our punt returner because we couldn't stop anybody. It was literally just whoever got the ball last won the game because the defense couldn't stop anybody. And then the media, the fans, all have the nerve to blame Tony Romo? Wake up. I mean, unreal. We would lose games 36 to 37. When you put up 36 points in the National Football League, you should win the freaking football game. You know, when we lost to the Denver Broncos, we lost 51 to 48. We put up 48 points and it wasn't good enough. And you want to blame Romo for a, for an interception where he tripped on Tyron Smith's foot? Like, that's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. But what I will say is the defense does look improved to me. Um, and on top of that, uh, 
we have an offensive line that is a monster. I mean, it literally is the best offensive line in the National Football League. And what's great is you could argue that Tyron Smith is the best left tackle. You could argue that Travis Frederick is the best center. And, and there's no dispute. In him. Zach Martin's the best guard in the National Football League. The guy made all pro his rookie year. Like, he's phenomenal. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, that being said, Romo has the protection now. Um, Romo is a smarter, better quarterback now, and we have a better defense. So I don't see us going 8-8. Eight and eight. I don't see us being this horrible football team that people think we're going to be because now we have to rely on Tony Romo because we don't have Des Bryant. You know, give me a break. We'll be all right. I mean, it'll definitely hurt that we won't have Des, but I don't think we're not going to win football games. Um, and... One thing I want to talk about, too, is just the structure of the team. You know, we have Steven Jones and Will McClay are really our GMs. Like, yes, Jerry Jones gets all the credit. Yes, Jerry is like the publicity guy. It's kind of like the UFC, as in uh, Lorenzo Fertitta and Frank Fertitta, you know, they actually own the company. But, like, and they, they probably do a lot more of the decision-making but yet Dana White is the one that faces the media and Dana White is the one that's like looks like the figurehead for the UFC. It's a lot like that. Like Will Will is definitely all about the personnel. Will's the one that's the personnel that'll find the players and Steven is the one that'll manage the cap. And because Jerry's not managing the cap anymore, we're handling things so much better. We have more depth in our in our than we've ever had. We have great financial uh you know um, room, you know, our cap room is not full anymore. We're not signing dumb football deals. Uh, we're making sure that, you know, if the, if the player is old, we don't sign him to a long-term deal unless, you know, it's someone like Tony Romo. But, um, in the future, you know, we're looking for young players. Uh, when we make trades, <clears throat> we're not trading for old players. We're not signing a bunch of old players. We're looking for young players that we could build. You know, we, we've, we've learned that you don't want to sign a guy that is past his prime or maybe a little bit still in his prime but not much future years left in that. Um, we're looking for guys that have a huge upside, and that's what we're getting right now. So, And young guys, young guys with huge upside. You know, yeah, we have a McFadden, something like that. But if we're going to get a McFadden, then he's got to be cheap. And that's exactly what he was. Um, not a lot of guaranteed money. Cut him at any time if we want to. And it's basically just free looks. You know, free looks, if they don't work out, we move on. And we're not in cap hell. Like, like the Seahawks, for example. The Seahawks did everything right. They drafted well. They didn't have a lot of... Uh, cap problems but when all these guys became free agents they had to pay them and now they're in a huge disaster and you look what's going on with cam chancellor and all this like their egos are all being offended and guys want money and some guys aren't getting paid that think they should get money and it's just a big mess you know with dallas right now only the top tier guys get paid and then the rest we just kind of do a rotation system we're looking for older vets signing for two years and then moving on and then we're just keep drafting, draft, rotate, draft, rotate, and not have to pay big contracts. So I really like what we're doing right now. <laughs> I also think that Jason Garrett is a great coach, great motivator. Um, you know, so many people think he's just some Jerry puppet. He's not at all. You know, he, he is actually kind of a hard ass. Um, and also he, uh, he, he just, he's always got these quotes and he's always like, be your best for the, for the today, you know, like he, he expects excellence. And also he's a great talent evaluator. <laughs> so because he's a great talent evaluator, um, I feel like our drafting has gotten way better. I feel like we hit a home run with the draft and, uh, you know, I, I'm really happy with the direction that we're going. Uh, <clears throat> so that being said, um, a couple things that, concern me I guess you would say uh the running game the running back by committee system I don't know I just don't think that we have a guy what really bothers me is we should have drafted one I mean 
I would have rather taken Randy Gregory in the first round and Tevin Coleman in the second round than going to get Byron Jones. Now, Byron Jones is a good player right now. He hasn't been great, and I don't know if he ever will be great. Um, he can play multiple positions. He's a smart kid, uh, but you just don't know. Yes, he was a workout warrior at the Combine, and, and maybe that's all he'll be. I don't know. Um, but I like what I've seen out of him so far. But, man, if you're going to get rid of DeMarco Murray, you had to get draft a running back. You had to. And we didn't do it. And uh, I understand they didn't expect Randy Gregory to follow the second round. I don't even think they expected Byron Jones to fall in the first round where he did. So they felt really fortunate. But, man, when the third round came, no running back. The fourth round came, no running back. The fifth round, no running back. It was like, God, okay. So we're just going to roll with Randall. And the reason I don't like Randall is, is the kid's a knucklehead. He's just stupid. You can tell it. Like, he stole the underwear. He stole the perfume. If you listen to the TMZ police call from his girlfriend or his baby mama or whatever, doesn't sound good. You know, he's walking around with his wife beater. He smashes a window with his fist. And, like, he just... And then she calls and says, never mind, you know, but she's like, I want to, I want to report a, a, a crime about Joseph Randall. Yeah, he were, he, he played for the Cowboys, like trying to almost like be a brag about it. Like, it's just Joseph Randall to me is that guy that just shows up at the nightclub and thinks he is the man and he has done nothing in this league. And uh, I just don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like the comments he made about DeMarco leaving meat on the bone and all that stuff. Like, I can understand that DeMarco did, isn't the fastest guy. He's not a home run hitter. So I understand what he's saying, but it's unnecessary. You don't need to take shots at him. Um, and it, it's not because I, I like DeMarco as a person or anything like that. It's just it brings unwanted attention. And then... When he's starting week one at Sunday Night Football against the Giants, you could tell he was nervous because he put so much pressure on himself. And I just think he's a dumb kid. I, I, I The way he'll fumble the football, um, he just looks lost a lot of times. And, like, if he misses his block, he'll do he'll hold somebody's foot. You know what I mean? Like, he just – he's not the smartest football player, and I don't, I don't think we need that. Uh, what I – I think he's a good football player. I think he's a second – a second back like I don't I think he's a second string running back I don't think he's a starter and I don't think he should get the bulk of the carries I think Darren McFadden should um you know and then I was totally about firing Lance Dunbar cutting Lance Dunbar I don't think we need Lance Dunbar and the reason about that was is because we're paying him 1.5 million dollars now and that's quite a bit for for a guy that was an undrafted free agent that's never produced never produced on the field till till this week so uh, I just didn't like it, but he proved me wrong on on uh, Sunday. He played really well, and uh, if we're going to use him more as a receiver instead of a running back, I'm cool with that. I mean, the biggest problem with Dunbar is he can't stay healthy, he can't take the hits, and I don't see him in between tackle or runner, or running in between tackles. So I just I didn't see the point of having him on this football team. So, um, but if we're going to use him as a receiver, that changes everything. You know, he's supposed to be our little Sproles. Well, then that's what he needs to be. You know, Beasley's our Welker, Beasley's our Edelman, then, then let Dunbar be our Sproles. Um, and then now we have Christian Michael, who we gave up a seventh round pick to Seattle for, and he brings something that's to the team that we don't have. He brings that physicalness. He brings that hammer. He brings that guy that's on fourth and one you can plug in and punch it through you know what I mean goal line situations you can punch it through and I have a lot of hope for that guy so hopefully it works out hopefully he gets more carries I really think Joseph Randall's role will reduce as the season goes on I just I'm not a believer in the guy but um you know I'm fine with being wrong hey as long as we win I'll be wrong all day I could care less the main goal is to win so you know it's just my opinion but like I said if I'm proven wrong great I love it um Let's see what else. You know, another thing, too, in this offseason, we got rid of Dwayne Harris, and uh, he looked terrible with the Giants, by the way. And I have kind of felt like he was starting to become a declining player. But in that sense, we don't have a dynamic punt returner. Like, I hate Cole Beasley back there. He's a fair catch guy. And on top of that, it just gives teams open season on him, and he's too important to this offense to put him back there. Lucky Whitehead, everybody's rooting for him. I like the kid. 
He even looks like Harris. He flashes. He has speed. Um, he looks like he could be a dynamic returner, but he has trouble holding on to the football. And uh, at this point, though, I'd rather put him back there. Let's just see what he's got. And if he can't do it, then just cut him. You know, there's no point in keeping this kid around if he can't be a, a special teams player because uh, we're not going to probably use him much in the offense. And then uh, we just traded uh, the, with the Raiders for Bryce Butler, uh, our fifth-round pick, if he if he's on the team for six games, if he's active for six games. Um, so And then we get their sixth-round pick. Um, the kid looks pretty good. You know, he's tall, like 6'3", he's fast. Um, you know, I'm always a believer, you know, just because they play for the Raiders doesn't mean that they, they won't be any good because – that's a losing organization. You know what I mean? That that organization is, is, you just get used to losing. And you don't know how to win. And you don't know what it's like. You, you just go out there and you play. You know what I mean? But there's really no, like, I'm not saying they don't try to win. They just accept losing. And uh, I think it'll be a, a real culture change for that kid once he comes in there. Once he actually has a real quarterback and you tell him what to do and where to go. And what he expects from him and all that. Because Romo can make you a superstar. He's done it multiple times. You know, he made Patrick Creighton look good. He made uh, Miles Austin look fantastic. He made Laurent Robinson. He he retired Laurent Robinson. Like, that, that guy got, like, $20 million guaranteed after being in the league for, like, four or five years doing nothing. He got, like, 11 touchdowns from Romo in Dallas. Got a deal with Jacksonville. Got four concussions. Retired, but he got, like, $20 million guaranteed. So Romo, that, that dude owes Romo so much it's not even funny. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, we got to figure out what we're going to do with punt return, kick return, and who replaces Dez. I like the Bryce Butler kid way more than Devin Street. To me, Devin Street has been nothing but hype. You know, when we drafted him, I think we got him in the fifth round. People were saying we got him as a steal and all this stuff and we were all excited and blah 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 i man this kid has shown me absolutely nothing i've seen him drop passes i've seen him fumble i've seen him struggle in preseason i mean he he does something every now and then in training camp or preseason but i mean nothing special at all and i don't think he's the type of guy to replace des i don't think he's the type of guy to replace anybody in the nfl and uh like I said, I want Bryce Butler in there. I think Bryce Butler, Terrence Williams, Cole Beasley, Jason Witten, uh, Gavin Escobar, that's a dynamic uh, offensive weapons for, for Romo, and, and we can win a lot of games with that. So, you know, um, that's how I'm feeling right now. Defense, you know, and it's, it's interesting too because when we get to the Patriots, we get Rolando McLean and Greg Hardy back. If Sean Lee stays healthy and we get put in Rolando McClain, that is going to be nasty. We are going to inflict a lot of pain. And we are going to force more turnovers. Rolando McClain brings an amazing physicalness. And Sean Lee is a very smart football player. You put both of those together and that is scary. Greg Hardy, he'd be the best pass rusher on this team by far immediately. Immediately. And then, you know, when Randy Gregory comes back after that. Because, see, the thing is, is luckily for us, we actually have a bye in week five. And that's huge because that's a whole week rest for Dez and Gregory uh, that that they normally would have to play through. So um, that's big for us. I'm expecting Randy Gregory after the bye. So I think he'll be back for the Giants. And then um, Dez... I think Dez is more realistic for not the Giants, but Seattle, which I think would be at like week seven. So hopefully I'm wrong, but I think Dez is more realistic for Seattle. So that being said, um, got a couple things I want to do, you know, because I know not everybody is a Cowboys fan, which, you know, nobody's perfect. But, uh, all right, so I was going to go ahead and give you my week two picks. Um, we have the Broncos at the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are going to win this game. I think Peyton Manning is shot. Like, that guy looks terrible right now. And uh, I heard he can't even feel his fingertips at this point of his career, which is really sad, and it's just it's time to move on. Um, he should have retired last year, 
And uh, this thing, you know, honestly, I think the Broncos this season are going to decide if Brock Osweiler or Peyton Manning is the better quarterback. And I would not be surprised at some point, maybe week 12, week 13, that they go with the young gun. Also, the Broncos offensive line is not very good. And my God, dude, Kansas City is going to hit Peyton Manning hard. I don't even know if Peyton Manning will make it through the whole season because uh, that's... That, he can't take a lot of hits, and it looks like he's going to get beat up pretty bad this year. Um, Texans at Panthers. Um, as you know, I'm, I'm, I live in Houston. I can't stand the Texans. I think that they are trash, and uh, I think they're going to lose this game. Um, you know, the only concern is it doesn't look like Luke Keekley will be there. So that's that's tough, but man, I just think the Texans are not that good. J.J. Watt cannot win you football games. You know what's funny to me is everybody wanted to say J.J. Watt was the MVP of this league. J.J. Watt isn't even in the MVP of that team. The MVP of that team is Arian Foster, because when Arian Foster plays, they win games. If Arian Foster doesn't play, they don't win games. And that's that's the honest truth. Like, J.J. Watt can get you two sacks and a forced fumble and even taking a touchdown to the house or whatever you want to do. But if Arian Foster can't play, the offense doesn't score. And if the offense doesn't score, you don't win games. So, in my opinion, uh, the Panthers are going to win that game. 49ers at Steelers, that's a tough one. Um, I'm, I might go back and forth on this. The 49ers looked way better than I expected, and Carlos Hyde looked amazing. If you have him on fantasy, be very happy. Uh, I'm going to go with the Steelers. It's at home, and um, they have an explosive offense. I just think that they should be able to, if, if it becomes a shootout, I don't think Colin Kaepernick can handle that, and I think that the Steelers will win. Because if you're just going to go by better quarterbacks, Big Ben's a better quarterback than Colin Kaepernick. Um, the Buccaneers at the Saints, man, the Bucks look like straight garbage. And uh, to play in the Dome, I think Jameis Winston's going to have all sorts of problems. So I've got I've got the Saints in that one. Lions and Vikings. Man, I don't understand the Vikings at all. Adrian Peterson had 10 carries for crying out loud. And uh, that that did not look good. And this is the, the Lions, I think, are a more explosive offense. And I, I just think the Vikings are confused on what to do. They should be a way better football team. They had a great draft. And, uh, man, you have Adrian Peterson for crying out loud. You have a better quarterback now. I mean, to put in Matt Asiata and all the, and the, that McKinnon kid, like, over Adrian Peterson? What? Why? Why would you do that? Like, it makes no sense. I've got the Lions. Um, Cardinals at Bears. Yeah, I've got the Cardinals. You know, the Bears. Uh, I think Matt Forte is going to be limited in yards in this one because the Cardinals have a pretty good defense, so it's going to be all on Cutler, and I don't, I wouldn't have a lot of faith in that. Patriots at Bills. Oh, I think the Bills are going to beat the crap out of the Patriots. I think that it will probably be a close game, but, oh, man, Tom Brady is going to wake up on Monday sore. Oh, I think he's going to get creamed. Um, and I just think the Bills are a physical team. Rex Ryan always gives um, Tom Brady a lot of problems. And, man, does he have weapons now. I mean, that D-line is nasty. Ronald Darby's looked great at corner. Um, I just expect the Bills to just freaking beat up the Patriots. I really do. And I expect Gronk to not be as big of a factor because Rex isn't dumb like the Steelers leaving Gronk wide open. Like that that Steelers defense was so bad. And it wasn't even just because, you know, scheme or anything. Like they just had no heart. They didn't tackle. They didn't do anything well. Like it just looked like they didn't even care. It was awful. Um Chargers at Bengals. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um I'm gonna have to lean towards the Chargers. I think the Chargers are going to win that game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals win. Uh, but if I had to pick, I'm going to pick the Chargers. They have a pretty dynamic offense and an underrated defense. Titans at Browns. Man, Marcus Mariota look good, huh? I'm going to go with Marcus Mariota and the Titans to beat the Browns. That'll be fun, though. Mariota versus Manziel. 
because there ain't no way Josh McCown is going to play again after a uh, play by next week after taking that shot. Oh my God, that was a huge hit. He spun him around Willie Beeman style. Whew. Um, Falcons at Giants. <laughs> Giants are taking another L. They're taking another L. You know, I don't know if the Falcons can can stop Odell Beckham. I don't know. I like the way their defense was, though, man. That was a nasty physical defense, like kind of like Seattle. Like, like that head coach is the truth. He brought in a, a completely culture change, and I really respect that. Um but man, they're the Giants can't stop Julio Jones. No way, no way. They're gonna get they're gonna get beat, and then the Giants will be zero and two, and people will be like, "Oh, I wonder what's going on with them. They're two time Super Bowl champions, the most mediocre Super Bowl champion team ever, both times. I mean, I don't even think they were that good when they won the Super Bowl. You know, and that's another thing too about the Super Bowl. It's so overrated because it's really about seating and it's about um getting hot at the right time and all that stuff like a lot of times the best teams don't win the super bowl a lot of times uh hell last year same thing best team did not win the super bowl um rams at redskins oh my god dude the rams d line is nasty and wait till todd Gurley gets in there that is going to change everything uh i've got the rams an easy win Miami at Jacksonville. I think Miami's going to win this game. Oh, man. Blake Bortles is going to be running for his life. Uh, yeah, definitely Miami's going to win that game. And uh, sorry, that was my Twitter notification there on the new uh, Windows 10. Um, let's see here. Ravens at Raiders. Ah, Ravens. Even even with the loss of Suggs, man, the Raiders look terrible. Uh, Cowboys at Eagles. Ugh. Um, this is the thing. Okay, so in the preseason, I was thinking, oh my God, this Eagles team looks nasty. Sam Bradford looked accurate. DeMarco Murray looked good. Um, you know, all the running backs looked good. And I was thinking, wow, like, it's just going to be a ridiculous point fest that's going to go on and uh then the regular season started and i watched that atlanta game okay so philly has no clue how to use demarco murray whatsoever i mean like putting him in the shotgun and like making him go like handoffs all the way to the outside like he's not fast so you know he's just he's just one of those dudes just pull the power eye and just let him run right through it. Like they're not going to do that. So I don't see how he fits this scheme. I don't see any reason why DeMarco Murray is an Eagle. It doesn't do them any good. Like they're, they use Ryan Matthews. They use Sproles more. Like what is the point of even having DeMarco on that team? And I feel like they, they bought DeMarco to keep him away from us. Like, what? Why would you do that? I mean, they spent $63 million on their backfield, and they didn't even get 100 yards out of them. And, I mean, honestly, Sproles is the most dynamic player that they have. If you could take out Sproles, it's like us getting Witten taken out or something. Like, it's a huge – he is the biggest problem. If if we if we do anything, is take out Sproles. Get Sproles out of the game, um, you know – Make sure that, that he doesn't hurt us, and we'll roll with their receivers. I'm not a big believer in their receivers. And Sam Bradford is trash. He's not that good. He's not that accurate either. And if you can get pressure on him, he will throw some terrible throws. I mean, I was at a Cowboys game live one time, and um, we were killing the Rams. And uh, DeMarcus Ware became the all-time leader in uh, sacks in Cowboys history. And, I mean, that kid was throwing trash everywhere. Not accurate at all. Missing wide open throws. Like, just garbage. And uh, I don't think he's that good. I don't think he's going to last. I mean, he already got an x-ray after the game against the Falcons. Uh, so, I think he's going to have a lot of problems. Also, he is, to me, he's mentally weak. He's never really been involved in high-pressure situations like being a quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Wait till he starts throwing picks and bad throws and that crowd starts booing him and wanting to throw batteries at him and all this other crap. 
he's going to start to panic, and I just don't think it's going to work out well. I think that the Eagles are the, – the biggest test to me is can the Cowboys stop the Eagles' offense because if they can, we're going to win the game because I'm not necessarily that worried about their their defense. Like I think it's it's decent. I think they have a better D-line than what most people think. Um and I think that their corners have improved, although Maxwell got toasted. And not just from Julio. He got toasted from Roddy White, too. Um, if, and if we had Dez, oh, my God, we would we would beat this team. But we don't have Dez. But I do like the fact that Philly doesn't really have a game plan against us because all their videotapes and all their stuff on game tape is with Dez. So they don't really know what we're going to do. So we can really catch them, you know, unexpected they don't they don't know what to game plan for us so uh but you know what we don't really know what to game plan for them because they picked it up in the second half on that monday night football game and uh you know who knows but at the end i'm trusting number nine i'm trusting tony romo winning this game would be huge it would put us two and oh in the division it would put the eagles at oh and two um and i just feel like that we're gonna win this game so i got the cowboys winning that game and I definitely have the Packers beating the Seahawks. And I don't necessarily even think it's a Cam Chancellor thing. I think that team is ready to implode. I think that that team is full of egos and babies and, um, you know, guys that Pete Carroll created a culture. And now that culture is backfiring on him. And when you lose a Super Bowl the way that they did and you've lost your first week game, you won't pay Cam Chancellor. There's just so much negative right now. And on top of that... Russell Wilson isn't very good. He's a solid quarterback, but without the defense, he isn't very good. And guess what? That O-line isn't the same anymore. They got rid of Max Unger. He was a huge part of their offense, um, and Russell Wilson is struggling. And uh, I expect it to happen more. You know, I don't think that the Seahawks are – when does when does a team go to the Super Bowl three years in a row? Like, I think the Seahawks, they'll be lucky. They'll be lucky if they make the playoffs. Because I don't even think they're going to win their division. So, and then the last but not least, Justin Colts. I think the Colts are going to win this game, but I think it, it could go either way. I think it could be close because I think Andrew Luck is being crowned the king before he's won anything. And, you know, that's a terrible division he's in. That's why he goes to the playoffs. It has nothing to do with him being an elite quarterback. I think that he is overrated as crap. I think he is a good quarterback, and I think he's a great quarterback to start your franchise with and all that stuff. But, man, that kid will throw interceptions. That kid will turn over the ball like crazy. And uh, it's it's definitely something you need to watch out for. Uh, that being said, um, you know, I think he's a good quarterback. I do think he's a good quarterback, but I don't think we should crown him yet. And I think that the Colts will probably find a way to win this game. So... That's pretty much all I have. Um, I just kind of want to go on a rant, too, also about uh, Cowboy fans in general. Um, I just think that there's so many that are just uninformed. They pick the Cowboys because it's cool. They pick the Cowboys because um, it's the most popular team or it's America's team or whatever. But, like, dude, if you're a Cowboys fan, learn your team, you know? Like, learn... Don't just learn Tony Romo, Jason Witten, Des Bryant. You know, learn who Orlando Skandrick is. Like, learn who Mo Claiborne is. Learn who Byron Jones is. Learn who the offensive line is. Like, learn your team and find out if you really think they're good or not. And <clears throat> quit saying such dumb, stupid stuff. Like, I think one of the biggest problems that, that, that Romo's had to overcome is the stupid fan base from Dallas. Like, most of the, a lot of them are full of, full of idiots. They have no clue about real football. And they think that because he doesn't have a Super Bowl, he's a failure. And if anything, the front office failed Tony Romo. The front office has failed Tony Romo. Tony Romo's always been a great quarterback. But the front office either overpaid players and then they had no depth. So when injuries happened, we were getting guys from smoothie shops to cover those injuries or we were getting um you know uh we would cut guys and have no money in in the free agency or we would just keep redoing contracts and signing all these new free agents well free agents get you broke like i understand miami you know they wanted in dominican sue at the end of the day that's going to become a bad decision anytime that you sign a high 
tier free agent, it will get your team broke, and it will usually turn out to be a bad decision. Because a lot of the times those guys are really good is because of the system that they're in and the the camaraderie that they've been with that team for five years and they know what to do and all this stuff. Now, granted, there's guys that will do well in other teams and sometimes you know even do better, but for the most part it's rare and you way overpay. And it's just not worth it. You know, the best thing to do is just go in the draft. Draft guys and, and you know, you don't have to pay them that much money. That first five-year contract in the first round, it's golden, baby. It's all guaranteed, but it's cheap. And that's that's what you want to do. You want to find guys that are cheap. And then you want to pay your premier players. That's how you build a football team. And I don't think Cowboy fans understand that. I mean, like today, when they heard that, you know, Hakeem Nix was working out for the Cowboys, everybody got excited. Like, oh, Hakeem Nix, Hakeem. The dude's out of the league, and you want him because he's a name. You want him because that's that's the only guy that you know. And he's no good anymore. That's why we went and got a guy like Bryce Butler, because he's young, and he has an upside. And so if he's good... He's going to be good for us for years, not just one year. You know what I mean? If we're going to make a trade, if we're going to get rid of a fifth-round pick, we're going to make sure that this guy can fit our system and be good for a long period of time. And and uh, that that's stuff that we didn't used to do. And that's the curse that has been Tony Romo. That's what he's had to deal with is really bad front office uh, management and really bad player personnel decisions. But yet, at the same time, he's been able to put us in games that we had no business winning. He's been able to pull off wins that we had no business winning. He's been able to play with punctured lung and broken ribs and, and you know, broken fingers and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, a herniated disc, for crying out loud. Played a whole half with a herniated disc. Um, because he gives everything he has to this team. And the fan base, for so long, would spit in his face for it. Like... It was just disgusting. And there's still fans to this day. Oh, well, we'll, well, we'd win a Super Bowl if we didn't have Romo. Well, look here, you dumb hick moron. Why don't you just quit watching football altogether? Because you have no clue what you're talking about. If you do not like Tony Romo, and you are a Dallas Cowboys fan, you are a pathetic, disgraced piece of trash that should take off any Dallas Cowboys clothing, fan apparel, and just... Get it out of your house because you are not part of our organization. You are not part of Cowboy Nation. You're a disgrace. And I'm going to leave it at that. Everybody enjoy uh, week two of football. Cowboys, Eagles, there's nothing like it. DeMarco, you sold your soul to the devil. And we're about to beat you down. And you are going to realize that you made a horrible mistake. That is, after that game, you were going to sit down with your wife and you were going to talk to her and go, baby, I think that I made a terrible mistake. I sold out and I left my brothers to come to this horrible piece of trash organization with the worst fan base in the National Football League for money. And you're going to look in the mirror and you're not going to like what you see. And at the end of the day, if you're a Philadelphia Eagle, bro, and you're now the enemy.